Good morning and welcome to Paul T's World. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to prune these two climbing roses. One of them, this one here, is Dancing Queen. One of them, this one here, is Golden Showers. And then we have Dancing Queen. They've been doing really well. They flower from June through to September, October. And I think now is a good time to prepare them for the winter and set them up for the spring and summer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the, all the weak growth here. The stems where the flowers were, I'll take all these down. And so we're left with a general superstructure of these main stems. You want four or five main stems. In actual fact, I've got three or four here. The Dancing Queen has a kind of a bush-like appearance. And I'm going to prune that right back. But it's also, this year, for the first time, it's actually sent up some climbing rose-type stems. There are some spent flowers. So we've got one here, one there, and on the other side, this one here. So I've got to decide what to do with these. I want to bend it over the way this one is bent over to encourage new shoots to come up from the main stems. Each of the new shoots will then produce flowers. The more horizontal that you have the main stems, the more shoots and the more vigorous the shoots will be. We've pruned most of it off now. Uh, the main superstructure is left nicely. And so we have two new shoots here, this one and this one, coming from the ground, which I'm really pleased about. So we've got one, two, three, four good shoots. Let's just thin out this rose now. I want to take off really as much as possible. I'm just pruning to a bud here. You can see the nodules and the buds. Just above a bud. Preferably, oh, these are very thorny. An outward facing bud. I might just get the loppers on this one. Oh. 
The beauty of climbing roses is that the flowers are formed on the new growth. So we cut it right back, looks a bit bare, but come spring, you'll see the new shoots and then the flowers will be formed on those new shoots in the same season. The difference between climbing roses and rambling roses. Rambling roses will flower next year on the growth that was produced on the stems that grew this year, which means you have to prune rambling roses soon after they've flowered. I support the rows with horizontal wires. Simply drill the hole, put in a roll plug and twist in a screw with an eye. Use strong enough wire so you can tighten it with a little tension. I have the horizontal wires about two to three feet apart. Prune off anything that looks dead. These little air bits here look quite dead so in fact I'm going to take, I'm going to take it right off to here and indeed this here. There's a bud there, so this should grow from there. This also is dark here. You can see that's dyed. There seems to be a bud there, so if I just cut it there. Now this one looks dead all the way back, so let's cut it right back to the collar. Pruning is good fun. As you know, I enjoy pruning and pruning quite hard. Look at this. This is quite strong, but I'm going to take it right back to here. And I'm going to do that for two reasons. First of all, pruning right back invigorates the plant. Oh, you wait till you see it in February, March next year. They'll start growing strong shoots and leaves. And the second reason is I have a security light up here. And when these blow in the wind, they set the security light off. So I'm cutting them right back. Those are the last of the flowers there. I'm just looking back to where there's an outward facing bud. There we are. This is very flimsy, so all this can come off. And this, you'll be amazed at how powerfully this will grow next year. So, yeah, prune away, go right back to the last bud before the stronger stem. Oh, in fact, here's a, here's a bud there. That's very good. Now this is a nice strong stem. However, I originally tucked it behind the wire and you can see how it's, let's just get rid of this leaf. You can see how it's rubbing on the wire. Generally, I don't have them behind the wire. So I'm, I'm going to cut this down here. In fact, I'm gonna take it all the way down to here. There we are. So here's the aftermath of a little bit of pruning. We can see what we're doing now. I've left just the main stems. The sun is now out, we've pruned it back quite a way and what we have to do now is tie in the long stems. We've got uh, one nice stem here, there we are, and another one here. So these are two new lovely long stems 
of the Dancing Queen and this one. So there's three and a fourth. Beautiful. All new this year from the Dancing Queen because up to this year all it's done is produce a bush-like plant. When we move over to Golden Showers it's always been quite good. We've retained the main stem here that I've bent right over. We've got a new stem here that I'm going to tie in and another one here. This is somewhat flimsier but I'm going to keep it. So we end up with five stems there. Now this stem here won't bend round anywhere that I want. So I'm going to attach it to here for this coming year and then maybe it can grow across that way in the years to come. So I'm attaching it to the outside of the wire with a piece of string. We've got this lovely long shoot here. Isn't this gorgeous? Just look how thick that is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend it right round here. Let's hope I don't snap it. Right down to here like that. Nice and horizontal, absolutely perfect that. So what I'll do is I'll just tie it on here. Now this is what I do. I get a piece of string like this, double it over, put the loop behind and then put the other two ends through the loop and pull it. So you've got your loop now and so we'll just tie the end of the rose off here. So I'll just pull it down here and just do an overhand knot, nothing too fancy. I do know some fancy knots being a yachtsman but just two overhand knots will do fine for this, like that. And I'll just trim off the two ends here so it looks neater, like that. I'm going to reach him and bring him down to here. Here we have the end result of the golden showers. This part has worked quite well. I do have a stem here that I'm not quite sure what to do with, but I'm going to attach him to the wall here and see if it will grow up round here in the years to come. So I'm happy with that. Now as far as Dancing Queen goes, really difficult to get these stems to bend how I want. Doesn't look elegant but I've got a feeling it's going to be good and this will be really bushy in the summer with lots of flowers down below and here are those stems. So I've got this one going up here and what would be quite nice is if it actually grew round the wall here and in fact the same with this one. I've bent them over as far as I can and I'm hoping that shoots will grow up on the bend. This thick one here, I couldn't really bend it, it's too thick. Okay, I'm going to admit it. I tried to bend it and I broke it, so I've pruned it off here. <laughs> So it's a case of thinking for the future and where these stems might go. This one here, it would be brilliant if it came up and then down over here. The problem I've got is I've got two climbing roses together and I don't want one of them encroaching on the other one and that makes it a little bit difficult. It's not the classic fan shape that I would have liked but none of these are actually touching each other. I've made sure 
there's a distance between them so that we don't have them rubbing against each other. I'm really looking forward to showing you what this looks like next summer. It'll look great next year. I hope you've enjoyed that and subscribe, hit the notification button, and then I'm going to see you next time in Paul T's world. Bye.